Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we are going to do a consolidation sortie, going through all the stuff we've covered so far. So going from a cold start, selecting our, uh, or putting in waypoints, taking off, flying waypoints, entering waypoints in, uh, and landing. All right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to consolidate everything, go through everything that we've covered so far. And the whole idea of this sortie, it's going to go a little bit longer. This mission, this video will be a little bit longer, but it's for you guys that are still new to the Hornet. You can play along and fly this mission at the same time. So I'm going to put the link to this mission that I'm about to fly right now in the description below for you guys to download. You can download it, install it into your DCS folder. Um, and you can fly this mission at the same time as me and feel free to pause this video at any time or pause the game and you know work your way through it so you can like go through it's kind of like the the intent I guess is it's the I guess the best way I can describe it is like you're doing like an interactive mission with me but I'm not actually there with you real time so you can I'm going to fly the mission I'll go through it nice and slow you guys can fly, fly along at the same time with me and just pause and rewind the video. So let me know if uh, this works in the comments, if you like the idea of it. Uh, if it does work, I'll keep doing these. I'll do the, like, the next block of um, uh, tutorials and then we'll do like a consolidation video on you know, going through doing a flying a full sortie again. Um, and if it doesn't work, then fuck it, we tried, you know? Give it a crack, just something different. I, you know, I figured that this would be nice, nice way you guys can fly a sortie at the same time and put in the same waypoints and fly to the same spots and then you know you've done it right because you you know you're doing it at the same time as me so that's the that's the plan anyway so this mission like i said will be in the link district in the description down below download it install it and then load her up and then fly this fucking mission with me so let's do it let's get on into the jet here we go so we're going to come on in first thing we want to do is we're going to turn our battery on so over here you're going to right click battery and you get some lights turned on. That's good. Good things happening with the battery. Now we're going to turn our formation lights on. Left click and drag them up. All right. You Lighting is totally up to you guys. Okay, you can turn on position lights as well. I just turned formation lights on a little bit. It's just me. APU, we need that. Auxiliary power unit. Right click that so we can start our engines. And then back here, we're going to turn on our OBOGS, onboard oxygen generating system. Right click that. And we've got a little friendly reminder here. To start the mission, you will need to press the backslash key, select F10, other radio options, and then select the YouTube command to begin this sortie alongside the video while it's playing real time on your second monitor or your phone or whatever. So we're going to do that now. We're going to press backslash, press F10. We're going to click on YouTube. Boom. All right. So begin your cold start procedure in F18 Hornet. Feel free to pause the game with the pause key or pause and rewind the YouTube video and work your way through aircraft startup. Once you've completed your aircraft startup, open the radio menu using backslash and select ready to taxi. That's what we're gonna do. So back to our startup. So we just got the APU turned on. We turned on the OBOGS. Now we're gonna come forward. We've still got some uh, switches to hit. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, uh, our flaps to half because we need that for takeoff. We're gonna turn on our MFDs or DDIs, or whatever you wanna call them. We're gonna right click them twice today. Our HUD is this one here. HUD symbology brightness, left click and drag it all the way up. A radar altimeter. I like to leave mine on radar. All right, that's again total personal preference. I'm going to drag our bottom DDI all the way to bright. Jets flying over the top. Uh, our RWR AL, ALR 67 power. Left click that. Our ECM jammer self protection. We're going to put that on receive mode. And our chaff flare dispenser. Right click it twice to bypass. Then going to arm the ejection seat. We're going to turn on our aircraft lighting. Turn the floodlights on as well so it's nice and bright for you guys. Coming down, we're now going to turn on our radar to standby. And we're going to turn our INS because we are on the ground, not on an aircraft carrier. We're going to put it to ground alignment. So now we're all good to go. We just need to crank the engines up. So the buttons we need for engine startup, you can either, if you've got a... Uh, the Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, it's got finger lifts, all right, for the throttle. So you actually lift the throttle up and lift it over. There's like a physical uh, detent to lift the throttle up and over. So you can assign that to throttle right off slash idle and throttle throttle left off idle, all right? If you've got a, a, a joystick that does that, go for that. If not, you need those ones. So you need right shift and home. We'll put your throttle from 
cut off to idle to start the engine and then right alt home will start the lift okay and then if you want to shut the engine down it is right shift end and then right alt end are uh, your two commands so you need those to get the engines to start up right once we crank the engines so we are going to come down now engine crank just behind the apu make sure you got a green light for the apu on and you're going to right click on engine crank and we're going to have a look here underneath the left hand ddi we've got an engine rpm coming up so we're looking for 20 percent rpm which we've got and then we're going to go ahead and hit the uh, throttle to idle you can see now we've got our engine our, our, yeah engine trt has increased because we've got engine light off nozzles are moving engine oil pressure is coming up fuel flow starting to increase engine rpms coming up while that's happening we set our bingo just left click and hold i'm going to set it at 6000 you can totally set this to whatever you want i just like 6000 for me all right so that's that one turned on now we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna left click engine crank and again we're looking for 20 percent there we go throttles into idle all right so while that's doing its thing we're now going to come down so our ins is started because we're in ins ground so we want to speed things up if you don't do this next step it takes eight minutes for this to happen so we're going to go down here stored heading all right you're going to box that click it and it's going to change it from eight minute ins alignment to a one minute 30. so it makes your life a lot easier let's turn the floodlights down a little bit all right so that's that all happening engines are cranked up engines are started we're going to go ahead and shut the canopy now so it's a little bit quieter for us and then this next step is purely cos cosmetic for me so i because everything's green and black i like this to be green and black as well it just looks nicer for me okay nicer everything's got green on it and this is just white don't like it for me so i come down here and then i right click on this mode nvg night and day right click it once makes that go green you can adjust the brightness with the knob there Personal preference there, totally up to you. We then, after we've done that, we're going to turn our rad alt on, radar altimeter, set it to 100 feet for now, and then we're going to uncage our standby attitude indicator. All right, make sure it's good. And our INS is doing its thing. Now we're going to get a bit check, so we're going to hit our FCS right here, and we're going to hold the Yankee key, which is the same button for this. Okay, when I press Y on the keyboard, you can see it flicks that, so I'm holding Y, Yankee and I'm going to press the FCS button right there. It's going to say in test. And if we go to external view, you can see the flaps and slats, the stabs. They're all going to start doing things. The computer's doing its check. All right. Doing a self check. FCS page. You can see it's moving things and it should beep at us when it's all good. FCS is good to go. We still have some, uh, some errors we have to clear. Okay, we've got to get rid of those X's and we need to get rid of the FCS, the flaps off and the AIL off. So you come down here and you hit the FCS reset button. Left click that and then confirm all of the, uh, the cautions and stuff have gone away, which they have. And we're going to hit a takeoff trim as well. So at the moment, our stabs are at zero degrees. All right, you can see them there, the level. We press takeoff trim, which is that button right in the middle. All right, or V on the keyboard, V for Victor. Okay. Click it and see how now stabs are 12 degrees leading edge up. Try trailing edge, trailing edge up, 12 degrees up. And you can see they've dipped down there. All right. So it's set for takeoff. Set for takeoff. All right. So because our HUD is all washed out right there, so it looks all kind of uh, too bright, we're going to switch our HUD mode from day to night. And there we go. It's not as, not as brutal on the eyes. Uh, we'll just adjust the the gain on the map so we can actually read it so we've got now our ins is finished quality 0.5 okay we're going to come on over and we're going to hit this one here we're going to right click it twice to nav to ifa let's confirm we don't have any warnings all right so that is that and next we need to do is a j hammix alignment all right which was my last video i made so we're going to turn him on wait for the j hammix turn which it is on we're going to go to our support page. We're going to go to bit again. Displays. Click on that. And then HMD. And that's going to start a self-test for our Johannix, which it's doing. You can see it's going to flash, do some things. So it's going to keep repeating those, uh, those patterns there. 
until you press stop. So once we see the grid again, there we go, that'll do. We're gonna go ahead and press stop here on the same DDI. Press that. Now we need to do a uh, Jahamix alignment. So we're gonna hit the support page again. We're gonna come over onto the left where it says HMD, helmet mounted display. Click that and we've got this one here, align. We're gonna hit the align and we need to line up this cross as close as we can to the cross on the HUD. We're gonna press and hold cage uncage, which is C on the keyboard by default. Press and hold, it says align okay. All right, next one, we need to use our TDC to slew this cross right into the center. Just realign my track IR. Just fucked it up. All right, do it again. So if you fuck it up, it's all good. Don't stress. If it says uh, realign, just do it again. It's all good. All right, happy with that. So once we've got that one there done, we're then going to press cage on cage again. It's going to switch to roll, and we can adjust the roll on that one by using our TDC as well. We're going to press, once we're happy with that, so I don't know who it was in the comments. I can't remember his name, but he said, don't look down to hit the align button. So leave your head where it is, zoom your camera view out, and then click on the align box when you're finished. All right, and that apparently makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit more precise. So we're gonna run with that. I've got no reason to argue with it, so makes sense, makes sense to me. Happy days. All right, last thing before we take off or taxi, we need to get our lights on and we're also gonna set our hook bypass from carrier to field. And I'll explain what that does when we go and land in a little bit when we're landing later on in the sortie. All right, so we're good to taxi. We're gonna bring up the F10 menu and we're gonna say ready to taxi. All right, so now we're gonna tune in our radios, COM1 into frequency 260, COM2 into frequency 263. So to tune in your radios, you're gonna hit the COM1 button. We're gonna press 260123, press enter. We're then gonna hit COM2 button and then 263130, press enter. Comms are sorted. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and contact Batumi ATC for clearance to take off. All right. So while we're doing this, controls. If you don't have uh, simplified radio commands on in the main menu, or sometimes a sortie or a mission won't have it enabled, you're going to have to use the actual bind. So comm switch one by default is right alt and backslash, and comm switch two is right control backslash. I've changed mine or I've added mine to left control plus one left control two for com one com two so make sure you use the appropriate one so when i use backslash you can see it says main there okay i just press backslash this won't work in the air if you press backslash in the air and you've got simplified radio commands turned off backslash won't work as soon as you get get weight off wheels okay so you'll have to use either com one com one or com two okay so we're going to use com one and we're going to contact ATC, Batumi, and press start up. Even though we've already started up, but it's what we've got to do. All right, cleared for start up. Now we're going to go request taxi to runway. Should hopefully say we're cleared to taxi. We're cleared. All right, so now we're going to go back to the parent menu. We're going to go to F10, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to enter in our waypoints now. So when we do this, again, don't stress if you fuck it up. It's all good. You can always just, even if you've totally royally fucked these up, just go back to the start of this video, like the start of this little segment here, and just do it again. You can, like, you can override the waypoints. Don't stress. You don't have to restart the whole mission. It's all good. If you fuck it, don't worry. It's fine, okay? It's not the end of the world. You're okay. What the f fuck is what are these guys doing fucking pair of cowboys just saw him like dip below the trees ai doing ai things what the f jesus okay whatever whatever i don't know what they're doing they're supposed to just come in and land but apparently that's too hard for them one of them's landed um anyways let's do this waypoint entry Boom, so there's our waypoints. So we need lat long 
and we're going to do lat long precise, right? And if this disappears on you, which it probably will, you can bring it up using the F10 menu, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So what we need to do to put these waypoints in, we're going to go ahead and go to our support page. We're going to go HSI. All right, we're going to go waypoint number one. So when you're entering waypoints, um, as a rule, again, you don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do. I leave, so waypoint zero is this point right here on the ground. This point exactly where my jet is right now, this is waypoint zero. So if I want to get back to Batumi, I can just use waypoint zero to get back to here, this exact spot. I can navigate to waypoint zero and I'll make my way back to my starting airfield. So it's very handy, don't override waypoint zero. I always go to waypoint number one, so bump it up one and then put your first waypoint in from there. Right, so that is the first part. We've gone to waypoint one. So now see how it's disappeared. We go bring up our radio, F10, waypoint information. And there is our stuff we need again. So now we're going to go to data and we're going to change our type. So you can see we want uh, the lat long seconds. So we want the apostrophes, all right? The apostrophes, we want it to look the same as that. So we're gonna, all I did was went to the aircraft tab. We we're on waypoint tab before. Go to the aircraft. All right, and again, to get back to there, we went uh, waypoint one. Make sure it says waypoint one. We hit the data and then it'll default on the waypoint. We wanna go AC for aircraft and just switch it from lat long decimal to lat long seconds. Okay, that's what we want. Then gonna go back to waypoint and we're going to put in a waypoint sequence. So sequence UFC. We're going to press insert number one because we've got waypoint one here. We press enter. Now you can see it says zero dash one. All right. And so we're just putting a flight plan in. So it's going to put lines on our HSI for us to follow. Once we've done that, it's disappeared again. Don't stress. Just pop it back up again. All right. So we've got everything we need to. We're going to go UFC and we're going to put this in now. So position. You're going to make sure the two dots there are next to position. And we're going to press number two for north. And we're going to write that in four, two, two, three, three, six, press enter. Then we're going to press number six for east. And then we want four, one, three, three, two, eight, enter. And then elevation is in feet and we want 15, 15 feet. Bam. Now you can confirm our waypoint is there. North four, two, two, three, three, five, close enough. East 413327, close enough, elevation 14 feet. So it, it corrects it to, you know, whatever it's, it knows with its GPS fucking crap. All right. But that's, it's pretty much, it's spot on what we want. That is it. And we can see that that is entered. So now we're going to go back to HSI. All right. If we want to bump the scale out here, you can see there is our first waypoint. It is currently 47.6 nautical miles from us at bearing 344 degrees from our location and it's going to take us 40 minutes at the moment so that that time there will update as you change the speed of your aircraft uh, it'll give you an eta on waypoint time which is cool if you know that you've got a waypoint for a target you can give an eta of how long you're going to take to get to the area um, just to give other guys a heads up of how long you're going to be and that stuff Right, so now we're going to do it again. We're going to go waypoint number two. So I'm going to bring up the radio again. Other waypoints. So we're going to go waypoint two. Press data. So now this one here is in lat long precise. So you can see it's got an extra decimal there. So all we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. Sequence. We're going to insert. We're going to press number two. Enter. So now we've got waypoint two, waypoint two. And we're going to hit this precise button here. Hit the precise box. And you can see it gives us that extra two zeros. Okay, so it's zero, 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 zero. And then we got zero, 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 which is exactly what we want there. So now, same deal, position. We're gonna go north for two, four, five, three, four. And then we press enter. And then we're gonna write nine, two, enter. All right, and then we do it again. Six for east, four, two, Zero one five one enter and then six seven enter and if it disappears it's all good just bring it back up F10 F1 and elevation we need to punch that in is in one six two one feet one six two one feet 
Enter. And then we can confirm there. North 424534 decimal 92. And then East 420151 decimal 671620 feet. Booyah. All right. And then if we uh, zoom out, we can see waypoint number one waypoint number two okay waypoint 272 waypoint one is 47 so we are good we've entered our waypoints in we can go ahead and taxi good to go all right so i'm going to bring out the pilot body and the stick so backslash or backspace sorry on the keyboard and then right shift p for papa brings up the pilot body okay for realism we're going to turn the brake off park brake off and then get ourselves ready to taxi. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna spill out the engines, just give them a little bit. As soon as we start to move, nice and easy, we're gonna taxi right over there where we're heading. So just easy on the throttles, guys. Easy on the throttles when you're taxiing around. You don't have to go full afterburner when you do this. Nice and easy is all we need. Look at this. Look at this. Looking sexy. Righto. So as we take the active, uh, it's going to give us, when we pull out there, it's going to tell us the QFE for the airfield. We're going to set that just in case we have to come back here. QFE is your barometric altitude, your air pressure, local. Right, so let's taxi out. Take slightly off of center line because I know it pisses off some people. They don't like it. All right, there we go. Two nine decimal eight nine. So we're going to change our QFE two nine nine two to two nine eight nine. We can confirm on the HUD there. That is that. So that's just setting up our barometric altitude. Okay. So as I adjust that two nine eight nine, it was. If I move it, you can see the uh, the altitude there is increased. It says one eighty now because it's a thirty point zero eight. So it's important to set that to the correct QFE for the airfield so that you get a, an accurate reading for ground height if you're landing in uh, shitty weather. So otherwise you'll crash into the ground because you won't know how high the ground actually is. All right. Anyways, let's go. So we're going to hit uh, waypoint one, which we've got. Box it. And brakes on. Spooling up. We're just going to do a mill takeoff. So just spooling up some military power. Brakes off. And as soon as we hit 80 knots, we're going to turn our nose wheel steering off. There we go, nose wheel steering's off. And then it should get ourselves airborne. It's 160, start pulling back on the stick. Gentle, gentle, gentle. And there we go. All right, so we're going to put the gear up. G for gear, flaps up as well. And away we go. So we're going to come right now, heading over to our waypoint. God, I forget how good this game looks. Amazing. Coming right. So there's our waypoint marker there. So we're going to line up with the... Uh, carrot on the, the compass tape as soon as we get there roll out just sweeten him up just gonna pull our climb up we'll go about 10 degrees nose up so i'm just in uh, mill power now so what i'm going to do once i'm at 10 degrees nose up i'm going to press attitude hold so i press the ap on the the ufc here the up front controller a slash p we're going to select put it on 10 degrees we're going to hit ATTH 
And now I am hands free and it's just gonna hold. It's gonna hold that. There we go. Off we go. Look in the goods. God, I forget how good this game looks. Oh, so good. Let's turn off our lights there. Looking sexy. Look at that sun. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so we'll uh, we'll come up. We'll level off at about maybe eleven thousand feet. Okay, let's back him down. Touch too high. We'll just descend down to eleven thousand. Now I'm just going to back the throttles back. And it's going to hold 450 knots. So once I get to 450 knots indicated on the, the HUD there, I'm going to press my auto throttle control. Boom, ATC lights up on the HUD. And then just keep our nose coming down. And then once we get to 11,000, I'm going to turn on barometric altitude hold. 40, 30, 20, 10, 11,000. Boom. All right, and it's going to do its thing. So another cool thing we can do is we can now go uh, auto. All right, and you can see it's got a line now. And if I go couple, it's going to couple my couple my waypoint and my autopilot together so I'm going to hit that now couple and it's going to fly us straight to waypoint number one and then when it hits waypoint one it's going to automatically update to waypoint two and it's going to fly it'll turn to the right automatically I'll bring up my uh, controls there you can see there's our, our throttle is on and the throttle Auto throttle control or ATC engage disengage, which is T by default. That's like your uh, cruise control, I guess, on the uh, the throttle. T on the keyboard is your cruise control. So it's just going to hold 450 knots, or it actually works off Mac. So it's going to hold 0.81 Mac. Um, it's going to try and hold 0.81 Mac on the aircraft with the throttle system. So that's it, and we're just going to cruise on through. Get the stick back there. So you can see our first waypoint. So when we hit waypoint one, it should, if I made this mission correctly, it should pop up um, our next waypoint information. And then we're gonna go ahead and enter that. So we've got two more waypoints to put in and then we would have covered all the different types of waypoints. So, so far we've done lat long and lat long precise. And now we need to do lat long decimal and then MGRS grid as well. So we've got 15.6 nautical miles. So if you do hit the waypoint, waypoint one ahead of me all right because you gave it some beans um just start flying towards waypoint two and um either just just pause the game for a second and fast forward the video to you i've caught up to where you're at and then just carry on all right so hopefully this works if you get ahead of it you can you can like pause your game and then uh fast forward the youtube video or if i get too far ahead of you you can pause the video until until you catch back up to where i am and then you can kind of just work your way through. So I hope it works. It should it should work, but you guys let me know. Let me know. Just cruising along. Lovely, lovely morning. So we got eight miles. As soon as we hit waypoint one, it should pop up some text in the top right for us with our new waypoint details. And then we're gonna go through our next waypoint. We're gonna slow down uh, we'll probably slow down to like 300 knots, just so we got a bit more time before we hit waypoint number two, so we can enter in all the uh, the data. So four mile, then it should update to waypoint number two. There we go. There's our waypoint info, and again we can use the same stuff. So we'll just wait for ourselves to get with waypoint two before we start worrying about any of this. So we want lat long decimal and MGRS grid is going to be our next two waypoints. So as soon as we hit this waypoint, it should automatically chuck a right. So again, there's my controls. I'm not touching anything. I'm just sitting here in my chair doing nothing. All right, there we go. So it's hooking around to the right. We're going to turn off ATC. I'm going to 
drop the throttles back a touch. So the aircraft, I'm just using the throttles now. The aircraft's flying itself. Which is really cool that the Hornet can do this. So throttles are in full idle now. We're going to slow right down. Might pop out the speed brakes. Slow it down. We'll slow down to 300. 300 knots. That'll do. Close enough. All right, so when you're putting in extra waypoints, make sure if you've got it in uh, coupled mode, you want to take it out of that. Take coupled mode out. All right, otherwise when you start putting in waypoints, it's going to make your plane fly all over the place. Uh, we're going to also hit that sequence back to zero, turn off auto, all right, and unbox waypoint. So now we're going to do our waypoint number three. So we're going to go data, bring up our next waypoint info. So we've got lat long decimal, so we need to change it now in the aircraft page. We're going to hit this bottom right to lat long decimal, right? And back to waypoint, and we want to put it in as required. So we're going to go sequence, insert, number three, enter, UFC position. We're going to bunch him in two for north, four, three, one, six, enter, and then two, five, five. Enter and then six for east four one one three enter and then zero zero five enter elevation is six four five seven six four five seven feet enter done next one HSI okay you don't have to go back to here but it's just I don't know do what you do what you got to do uh, waypoint number four, we're going to go to data. We're going to change this now to MGRS grid. All right, so let's make sure we get this back up. Next waypoint. Uh, so now make sure we've got precise box still, which we do. We're going to hit the UFC and we're going to hit grid here. All right, grid on the UFC. Grid. And we want to select 38TKP. So at the moment, we are in GH. There's KP. So I'm going to use my TDC to slew over to KP. I'm going to press TDC depress. Throttle designator controller depress. Select KP, which it's done. It should switch back now. Now we're going to punch in this. So now we're going to go 9. Don't have to press position. 93063. And then 028902. Eight nine zero enter and then elevation is one seven 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 one feet. It's a high boy. Enter. There we go. We can confirm. Uh, come on, you bastard. Uh, F ten. Just confirming. Grid thirty eight T. Oh, Tango Kilo Papa nine three zero six three. Zero two eight nine zero and one seven 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 one feet done. Right, HSI. We're gonna go back to waypoint number two, which we haven't hit yet. We can go ahead and press auto. When you press auto, it will default back to waypoint zero. So make sure you um, reselect it. Okay. And if these aren't showing, you might be on the wrong waypoint sequence. So just cycle sequence two, sequence three, sequence one. Hit auto again, and it should be good. And it defaults to zero, so just be aware of that. So we want waypoint two. Now we can go ahead and press our coupled mode again. And we can speed back up. So I'm just going to go full mil power now. And we'll just fly these waypoints. So as soon as we hit there, we're four mile out from the waypoint. It should chuck a hard left. All right, so we'll just hit the waypoint. You hear that little beep. Two mile, and it should bank over to the left in a second. So it's at full mil power now. Boom. And away it goes. So that's all the flight control computer, right? The the flight computer is flying the jet, holding autopilot, doing its thing.
coupled autopilot. I'm not doing a single bit. So really good if you've got a long sortie and you can't be fucked flying. You just punch in the waypoints, put him on auto and just say go. And it'll fly the waypoints. This entire thing, it's gonna fly the entire sortie now without me touching it, if you wanted to. So I've got 44.1 nautical mile. So again, we're just gonna fly along. Um, we might come out of autopilot right now and we're just gonna climb up because our last waypoint is that big ass mountain over there. All right, which is 17,000 feet. We're currently at uh, 10,000. All right, rat out is 3,000. So that's the difference between your rat out and your barometric. When you're above 5,000 feet, it'll give you a barometric and the R will be flashing. But if you're if the ground's below 5,000 feet, right, or if you're above, sorry, if you are 5,000 feet or less towards the ground, your rat out will give you, so see how it's switching in and out? So we went into a ravine, and then as the, we come up closest, as the mountain starts coming up towards us, this is gonna switch from 11,000 feet. It'll switch because the rat out's gonna kick back in. It'll pick up the, uh, the ground as we start coming up. The other side of this mountain so we just flew into a ravine there and there we go it's kicked back in so it's picked it up so that's why i leave it on radar altimeter because if i'm under 5,000 feet i want to see how high i am from the ground rather than just leaving it in there and you're like oh yeah i'm at 11,000 feet it's cool but you're not actually i mean you're at 11,000 feet barometric pressure but there's a fucking mountain here right and we're actually at 2,500 feet above the ground Anyways, autopilot off, we're going to climb up. And we're going to climb up to... Get up above, we'll go up to 20, 20,000 feet. So you can see it's got a flashing B there. And it, again, it's picked up the ground, so it's going back. So when we go above 5,000, the B flashing means that you're in radar altimeter mode. And the B is flashing to say that it's picking up barometric. Okay, so if you don't want it to flash be at you if that pisses you off put it in barometric pressure if you don't care about the flashing b just leave it in radar radar altimeter that's how i roll so it's going to come up and we'll level out at twenty thousand feet start pushing the nose down a touch Okay, 20,000. 20, 10, bam. Put that on. Coupled mode. And then we'll just let it go. Ah, uh, you know what I didn't do though? I didn't sequence waypoint four, did I? So it's just going to fly here. So we can quickly do this. Uh, let's turn that off. Turn this off. Quickly go back there. Uh, let's go data, waypoint four, sequence, insert four. Enter, there we go. Problem fixed. Go and autopilot, coupled. There we go. I'll just pick that up. So we've got 12 mile and then, so see how before it had just it ended on that one, even though we put waypoint four in because we didn't sequence um, fuck you. Because we didn't put the sequence for the waypoint in, it didn't show up on our HSI for our next autopilot um, flight plan. So if you sequence it, it puts the dotted lines on your HSI so you can see where you're going. We scale that out. All right, so you can see we started here. Waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, waypoint four. That is our flight plan. So you can see it on the map. Or the, on your HSI, where you're gonna, where you have to go. If you don't do the sequence, you don't see the dots. So that's pretty much it. That's that's it. Right, fuck that off for now. So yeah, let me know, guys, in the comments if um, this is helpful for you, or if it's just a waste of fucking time. And you're like, well, I just wasted. How long have you been going for? Thirty-nine minutes of my fucking life, and I'm never gonna get it back. But I hope it does help. I hope it does help. Uh, it's the best I can do without actually being in Discord or on comms with you and like walking you through this stuff. You can you can just do this at your own leisure. Pause the video, 
do what you got to do. There we go, we've hit waypoint number three. The aircraft's going to hook around and fly to waypoint number four. All by itself. Without me doing a thing. Super lazy. But when you got a long flight in to, to do your stuff, you know, why not use it? Why not use it? Man, I forget how good this game looks though. Ridiculous. All right, so we're just gonna hit waypoint four, and then once we hit waypoint four, hopefully, if I uh, made this mission properly, it should give us the next step, which should be flying to another airfield to go and land, pretty much. And the sortie is nothing too crazy. Like, it's pretty straightforward. You're not doing a great deal of flying, but you're learning how to put waypoints in, how to fly waypoints, how to use autopilot properly. Um, all those things, these are all good skills to have because the the better you're at with all the basics, the easier it is to do the hard stuff, right? Because the less your brain has to think about stuff that it shouldn't be thinking about and it can concentrate on the other stuff, you know, the more, uh, the more effective you're going to be when shit starts getting crazy and there's stuff shooting at you on the ground and you know, people are, there's jets, you know, coming in to try and attack you, shoot missiles at you, all that stuff. If you can have all this stuff, all the basics, like how to navigate, how to fly, how to take off, how to land, how to refuel, all that stuff, if you can get all that stuff like second nature, then you can really focus on how to employ your weapons, doing tactics, all that shit. Okay, so it's not the, not the most sexiest start to DCS, but it would be my recommendation for anyone that wants to be you know, a really good asset to a, a mission or a sortie, or uh, if you want to join a, an online squadron and fly sorties, um, this is the way to do it. Learn the basics before you worry about shooting missiles and dropping bombs and blowing stuff up. Learn how to aviate, navigate, communicate. Straightforward shit. And then you can drop bombs, fuck things up. All right, so we are 36, 36 mile away. Back down. Just cruising in at mill power. Might bump up the throttles and just go full burner here. See what the burner looks like. Full after burner. Oh yeah, baby. So we're coming up through the speed of sound now. So Mac 1. So if we go to F3 view now, I'm pressing F3. This should be a sonic boom, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Sonic boom. And then same deal when we move in front of the jet. It goes quiet because we're past or faster than the speed of sound. That's why it does that. All right, and while we're cruising, that's our total fuel. All right, the top one is our total fuel, and the bottom one is our internal fuel. So when the top and the bottom equal the same, it means our external tanks are empty. So we had three bags on. We can confirm that by going to the support page and hitting the fuel. All right, and there we go. So we can see our left wing, right wing, and our center line. There's our external tanks. They've all got 270 pounds of fuel left in them. All right, there's our external tank. So once they get to zero, we can go ahead and punch them off. So we're just gonna go full burner until we uh, burn through that juice. And we'll just punch our tanks off. Show you guys how to punch the tanks off. And we're currently at 16 mile to waypoint number four, which is good. There's our current fuel flow, 25,700 pounds of fuel an hour. Each engine is burning in full mill power, full, full afterburner, sorry. So they are thirsty at low altitude. If you get up nice and high, they're actually pretty efficient, but down low, they're not so good. All right, so tanks are now empty. 
We're going to throttle back to mill power. Tanks are empty. Bring up our RWR there. All right, seven mile. Let's see what it says. Alright, well done on flying all the waypoints successfully. Now it's time to head back to a nearby friendly airfield where we will do some touch and go landings and then come to a full stop at Kutaisi Airfield. Tune your TACAN into 44 X-ray and begin to navigate towards the airfield. To get airfield details, open F10 menu and click on Kutaisi Airfield. Alright, so let's have a quick look at that. So we're just going to put ourselves... Uh, we'll turn off coupled. Just put ourselves in a bit of a, bit of a bank. We're just going to throttle back here. All right, so I'm still on autopilot. I'm just slowing down a touch so we can go through this. So we're going to go into, make sure if you're going to do this with me, make sure your autopilot is on, okay? It's on, you're holding steady, and make sure that your throttle lock is on. doesn't have to be on 390, just make sure. Otherwise, if you're looking at F10, you're going to crash in the ground and you'll die. Okay, so <laughs> when you're looking at F10, make sure you've got autopilot on and your engine is not going to slow down that you stall out and crash, all right? So we're going to press F10 and we're going to find, so that's us there. And we're going to go to Kataisi over here. And here's our aerodrome information. So we can see here, uh, we've got the ATC for comm. So the Kataisi airfield is on 134.000 megahertz or 263.000 megahertz. So we should remember we tuned in comm2 to 263. So that is our, our radio, 263. TACAN, if it's got one, 44 X-ray is Kataisi. And it's got everything else you need to know. ILS, uh, not that it has that in the Hornet, but other aircraft do have ILS. Um, and the runways, runway 007 or runway 25, okay, is the information we need. So we are going to tune our TACAN now. So we're going to unbox waypoint. We're going to turn our TACAN. Here we are. So we're going to press TACAN on the UFC, TCN. We're going to press and hold on off until it turns on. And we're going to enter 44 and press enter. What was that? Texaco one way is on station to the southeast of waypoint four if you'd like to have a crack at aero refueling. Oh, there you go. If you guys want to have a crack at aero refuel, um, there is a refueler there. I forgot I'd put that in there. Check the mission briefing page, left control B to see tanker details again. There we are. All right, so there is our TACAN. If I want to navigate and put my TACAN on there, we can press that to box it. And then I can even go coupled mode and it'll fly us straight to the TACAN if we wanted to. So we are currently 58 mile to Kataisi, KTS. And we do have an, uh, an error refueler. So if you do want to have a crack at doing error refuels, there is a error refueler in this mission. If you want to have a bit of a fly, we're not going to do that because it's been going for 48 minutes now. Try to keep it around the hour mark if we can. Alright, so we'll get ourselves on to, I just turned couple mode off, just fly this one, well, fly, air quotes, fly, in uh, autopilot. Right, so our tanks, like I said, were empty, alright, fuel, we got a fuel page, see our left external, center line, and right external, uh, totally empty, 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 so we don't need them right now, we can punch them off, alright, confirm, we do have got three tanks on, we do have got... Good, good English. Right, so we've got a couple of options to get rid of the tanks. If you are carrying all bombs, all right, and fuel tanks, and you get jumped by a an aircraft, right, pops up and they like start shooting missiles at you, and you just need to like get the hell light and get the hell out of there, right, because you don't want to be doing, you don't want to be fighting other aircraft with a full you know, air to ground loadout. Or like bombed up with tanks and shit so the admiral's doorbell all right which is going to drop every single store that we have fitted so on the wings it's going to drop our center line our inboard t 
tanks, left hand and right hand wing tanks. And if we had other stores fitted on the wings, the the, uh, the sidewinders on the wingtips will not drop, but anything else on any pylon stations besides the wingtips and the cheek stations. Okay, so our, uh, our targeting pod and the AIM-120 there on the cheek station, right there, they're not gonna jettison, but everything else on the wings will go if you do this, All right? So if you press that button right there, push to jettison, it punches every single store off the jet. All right, Admiral's doorbell, because you've got to go and uh, answer the Admiral when you get back, because you just ditched a whole heap of shit for no reason. Well, yeah, better have a good reason for it. So you can do that, or we can do selective jettison, which is much nicer. So under here, we've got our stations to select. So we've got our center line, left hand inboard, right hand inboard, left hand outboard, right hand out, right hand outboard. So we're going to punch our center line off first. So we've selected it. And now down here, we've got our selective jettison switch. So we're going to right click and you can either select uh, stores. So we'll just punch the store off. If it's a, say we had AMRAMs and there was like two AMRAMs with a rack on it, you could select rack and it would punch off the rack as well, not just the stores. Um, or oh, sorry, if we had bombs more so. If you've got stores, it'll punch the bombs off but leave the racks. But if you choose racks, it'll punch the racks off as well as the bombs and punch the whole thing off. So we need, we're just going to put on stores here. And then all we do is we press this button here, the red select jettison button. Press it. Oh, we need master arm on. Master arm on. Press it. Boom. All right. Confirm master arm is on to jettison the stores. And there goes our tank. All right. And then just to show you, put that back to safe when you finish. If when we press the Admiral's doorbell, which we're going to do now, emergency jettison button, you'll see the left hand and right hand external tanks will punch off. Boom. And they go as well. So that's the two ways you can get rid of shit off your jet. Ideally, you want to use select jettison, not that, because you'll ditch everything off your aircraft. And then all you've got left is your wing stations and your cheek stations on the intakes. Everything else must go. <clears throat> All right, so we are 20 mile out from the airfield, so we're going to go ahead and start our descent. We'll call in to Batumi, uh, sorry, Batumi, Kataisi. So remember, we were on COM2, 263, COM2. We're going to go ATC, select Kataisi, and say inbound. All right. All right, so we're going to land on runway 07. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. So what was the uh, frequency? Fuck. Just uh, We're going to abort it. <laughs> got all distracted. So we want the QFE. That's what we want. That's what I want. So I'm going to say inbound again. Just set ourselves up here. In autopilot, barometric hold. We would use the wrong thing. Uh, F5, Kataisi, inbound. I used com one instead of com two just then. All right, two nine seven seven. There we go. Two nine seven seven. So we've got that. We've got Takan box, and now we can punch in our course line. So press and hold the course, and then we're going to go. Uh, 007. I think that's what we want. Just confirm. Two five. No, we want seventy, not zero zero seven. My bad, my bad, boys. I'm not good at math. All right, so we're gonna go seventy seven zero. Bam! There we go. That's better. Right, so there's our course line off the tack end. All right, so we're just going to fly around and we're going to let's go ahead and descend now. Throttle lock off. Throttles to idle. Just going to cruise on in now. Come through the clouds. 
little bit scary, but again, this is where your rat out's good because if this order automatically started, if it switched to 5,000, you know you're like, oh shit, we're just we're going into a mountain. All right, so we're going to come down to 2,000. There's the airfield right there. All right, you can confirm. It's on 10. That's the tack end. There is the airfield that we're going to land at. And we've got these lines here. So now we've got that line. So as we hook around, we're going to get that arrow right in the center of our HUD, and that should fly us right over the top of said airfield at Katysi. So I'm just throttles at idle, descending down. I'm going to be at 2,500 feet. All right, let's start hooking around here. Get on to zero seven zero. Keep our descent coming down. All right, so the tack end is not directly right on the the center line of the airfield. All right, but it gives you a roughy, so we know that we're heading the right direction. So we can go ahead and unbox the tack end now. We can see the airfield. We're good to go. So we're going to keep slowing down. Speed breakout. So we'll do a 250, 250 knots at 2,500. So it's going to do a uh, a quick circuit. Speed breaks out. There's 2,500. Speed break back in. The throttle's up a touch. So as soon as you get 250, we're in a little bit slow there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ATC. Lovely. All right, we climb up 2,500 feet. Autopilot on. I oh, we don't need autopilot, it's fine. Let's just box that. So we got 1.7. We're flying right over the top of Katysi right now. 250 knots, 2,500 feet. And we're just going to do a circuit, left-hand circuit. And then set ourselves up for a touch and go. Runway is occupied. All right, so once we get past the airfield, we're going to go into a left-hand turn. Try and keep it straight and level, 2,500. Set ourselves up into the downwind. All right, so into left-hand turn. So you just kind of just play this one by feel. There's no like exact science to this. Just the more you do it, the more uh, comfortable you'll get. So I'm just holding it. Just whatever feels right, you know. Just fly it. Just fly it. Don't get too, too fucking crazy on all this shit. Have a look. Tighten it up. Shallow it out. Whatever you got to do. Do we want to come along with a bit of separation between us and the airfield? So we got enough time to turn around and come and land. You don't want to be too close to the airfield is what I'm saying. So we keep on coming around. Altitude's all out to shit. It's kind of just guesstimating. All right. So what we're looking for is we want to put our wingtip, okay, 45 degrees from our wingtip when our touchdown point is 45 degrees behind our wing. That's when we're going to start our turn, start our turn in. Right. And I think if you're supposed to do this shit fucking proper proper, your wingtip should be on 
the runway. But we're so we're a little bit wide, but it's all good. Don't stress. All right, it's fucking, it's just just fucking chill. Let's just land this thing. Just land it. It's okay. So also while we're doing that, we need to slow down a bit more. We're going to put our gear down. So we're at two fifty. Gear down. Flaps down. I right, forgot to do that. And then we've got our should have done that before. Gear and flaps down, so I'm pushing nose down just to keep my nose straight and level. You can see my controls there. And we're going to start trimming on speed. So I'm tapping nose up trim. Tap, 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 tap. And you can see that I'm trimming my velocity vector into the E bracket. Once it's there, I'm now using throttle. So I bring my throttle up. Increases. So we're going to start our turn now. So I'm using the, the stick for roll. And throttle is pitch. And just keep correcting your... Uh, your trim for e on speed with your nose trim as you hook around so let's slow it out so you can see my controls there. i'm just tapping i'm using the stick to roll the aircraft only i'm not pulling back on the stick or pushing the stick forward and back to make my altitude increase or decrease i'm just using my throttle so if i want to descend i chop the throttle if i want to speed up or put my nose up i put power onto the jet and i'm just YOLO, you know, just just play it by feel, man. Just fucking let it come around. There's the airfield. All right, so this is a skill in itself, learning how to fly on speed. And this is my first landing I've done in a good three months as well, just just quietly. So we'll see how we go. Yeah, we we're on. So if you if you did have a crosswind, you could press the cage uncage button, and that would center the uh, the HUD. If the HUD was like way off on the piss, off to so you can see it kind of it's moving a little bit when I press it. And then that's it. You just use your throttle to keep the velocity vector at about three degrees nose down, and you want to put it on the fucking tire marks of the airfield. So we're just going to do a touch and go on this one, and then we'll do a, a full stop on the next one. And feel free, you guys can do as many touch and goes as you want. You don't have to just do this one time. All right. If you fuck it up, it's all good. Just go around, do it again. Practice, practice. So you can see my controls, what I'm doing here. Remember, this is a carrier aircraft, so it is designed to land pretty hard. There we go. We're on the deck. Roll, and we're going to go full power again, because we're doing a full takeoff. And away we go. So now we're going to go gear up. Flaps up. Touch and go, baby. Let's get some speed back up, and then we're going to do it all again. And this time we're going to come around, we're going to land full stop. We'll try and do it proper. So we'll climb back up. Bank around here. Alright, so we'll do this one by the book, Sam. So we'll go course. C cell comes up. 7 0. Enter. That's 2500. Okay, barometric on. Slow down. Two fifty knots. Went for 250. There we go. ATC on. 
climb up a touch. Keep it going. We're just gonna do this with autopilot. It's a lot, a lot simpler. That'll do. All right, so let's start our turn. So just remember when you're in autopilot, you can steer the jet. Just don't go crazy. If you pull too hard, if you notice these two dots disappear off B out, your autopilot's turned off. Just be aware of that. Another thing to kind of worry about. Um, don't think it matters. Well, it will matter, I guess, if you're landing on a short, short airfield. Um, but your aircraft weight. So if you go to the support page and checklist, gives you a current aircraft weight so three thirty-five thousand four hundred and fifty pounds so to land on the aircraft carrier if i remember correctly you've got to be under thirty three thousand which is about six thousand pound with no stores fitted to the jet so we're just going to go ahead and dump our fuel because we've got bingo at six thousand it's going to hit dump and can you see it you can just see the fuel coming out of the top of the stabs there two wispy little white lines there that's our fuel dumping out. And you can see now our fuel is dumping. And our aircraft weight's coming down. So when you're laying on a carrier, uh, definitely matters. All right, because you don't want to land overweight and fuck shit up. And on an airfield, if it is a short one, the heavier you are, the longer you run, the longer you roll, obviously. So keep that in mind. And... Because I've set my bingo at 6,000, my fuel dump is going to automatically turn off. It'll turn itself off. Righto. Roll out. Zero, 070. Zero. Autopilot turned off again. It's all gravy. All right, fuel's got 7,000 pounds. We've got 1,000 pounds to dump. I'm pretty sure it's 33,000. 33,000 trap weight, max trap weight for the Hornet. So if you are coming back with um, bombs or whatever fitted to the jet still, just make sure you check your checklist page and make sure you're under 33,000. If it's not 33,000, sure, someone in the comments will be like, you fucking idiot, it's not that, it's this. And I apologize. It's my first day back after a, a little bit of time off all right so we're cruising in so as we come around we're going to extend past the airfield to give ourselves a bit of a bit of distance so we'll go probably let's go like we'll go two mile past okay so at the moment we're coming over the top 0.9 nautical mile we're going to go two mile past and we're going to swing back around as we're swimming around, we're going to configure it for landing. So we're going to put our gear down, our flaps down. So gear can come down at 250 knots. All right, 250 or less, your landing gear can come down and you don't break it. There's Bingo. our fuel dump. Bingo. We're at 33,000 pretty much. Beautiful. All right, so 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 and auto throttle off. Let's go ahead and turn ourselves around. So as we establish ourselves back on the downwind, which will be 250, the bearing. We're going to configure for landing here. We start our descent down as well. A little bit slow, a little bit more power on the jet. Coming around, 250 should be our reciprocal. There it is, roll out. All right, so now we're gonna put our gear down. G for gear, put our flaps down. You're down, flaps down, throttles in idle and pushing the nose forward now to stop the, as soon as you flaps down, the nose comes up pretty violently. And then as you start to lose speed, we're going to start trimming. Trimming for on speed. And descending. So I'm tapping nose up trim. 
Get ourselves into the E bracket, which we are. Sweeten it up. Just tap your trim so it's good. We'll just descend down. So we want to look that part there when it's 45 degrees past our wing. That's when we want to start our turn. By the books and shit, you know? Watch me fuck this. Because I'm... I never land like this. <laughs> never. I never land like this. I always do shit hot breaks. Because they're better. Okay. So I'm just, again, throttle controls pitch. Stick controls roll. Alright, that looks about good there. So we're going to start our turn now. Just using the stick. Sweeten up your trim if you need to. And it's all just by fuel. And remember, if you fuck it up, just you can always go round. You can always go round. If your nose starts dropping, put power on the jet. If your nose goes too high, cut power away. And just tighten your, your turn up so the more angle of turn you put in, the more drop your nose is going to do because you're cutting lift off the jet. And the shallower your turn, you're going to increase lift. So as you come out of a turn, you want to kind of cut power off the jet. As you go into a turn, you want to put power on to kind of counteract the nose drop and the nose rise. If that makes sense at all. Looking good. A little bit left to center. Keep coming around. Okay. Bring him in. Always moving the throttles. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Go. Looking nice. You can see throttle, 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 touching the throttles. Touch down. And then gently, gently on the brakes. Just tapping the brakes. Left, right, left, right, left, right. And there we go. We made it, boys. We made it. So a thing that happens, or well, it used to happen, I don't know if it still does, sometimes when you touch down, the Hornet will still be stuck in flight idle, which is 70 engine RPM. 70. So when you touch down, it's always a good idea just to give the throttles a little bit of a, a forward and back. All right, just to get the flight idle to go back down to 65%. All right, to cut, to cut flight idle out. Otherwise, you'll... That extra 5% of thrust out of both engines makes you roll so much further. So if you're like, the Hornet shit, the Hornet breaks your shit, sometimes it's the engines. All right, and apparently that's a real thing. That's an actual real thing with the Hornet. It's not just a DCS thing. All right, we'll taxi off. Taxi off of the, the active runway. And that is us done. So there you go, boys. We uh, we did a, a full sortie from aircraft startup. We tuned in the radios. We punched in all the different coordinate types you can use in the F-18 Hornet. So lat long, lat long precise, lat long decimal, and MGRS grid. We flew all four waypoints, and then we used a tack end to navigate back to another airfield. Tuned our QFE in for the appropriate airfield, and landed, and didn't crash. Beautiful. Can't really get much better than that, right? Happy days. Lovely. All right, boys. Well, like I said, let me know in the comments if uh, this was a good idea or if it was an hour and a bit waste of your fucking time. And if it was good, I'll uh, look at doing this stuff as we work our way through. So we're probably going to start going through weapon systems next. Might do error refueling maybe. Um, that's also a good skill to have, learning how to aero refuel. Um, and then, yeah, we'll do like a consolidation uh, sortie where I'll fly it, I'll give you guys the mission, and, yeah, you guys can fly along with me and just practice and pause the video as you need. 
and yeah cool so if you did like the video make sure you go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't already i'd uh, appreciate if you hit the old big old subscribe button and the, the little bell thing so you get notified when i'm uh when a new video gets dropped um the frequency of the videos at the moment is still a little bit up in the air because i don't have a kind of a set plan of when i want to do the video so i kind of just do them when i see fit so make sure you hit that uh, little notifications bell so then you get the uh, alert that I have released a video and you keep up to date and I do stream on Twitch Monday to Friday well not Monday to Friday at the moment but I do stream on Twitch so if you haven't already jump on a uh, link in the description below for my Twitch page um, check it out go and give us a follow on there and when I go live on Twitch and fly DCS and all the rest of it uh, you'll get an alert and you can come and say hello see my ugly face and give me some shit good times right Anyways, that's enough rambling. It's been a long flight. It was an hour and 15 from woe to go. Not bad. And uh, yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments if it was good or bad. And hopefully you guys loved it. All right. Peace out, you fucks. See you on the next one.